This is Bishop Andre Thomas, and we are live on Facebook today. And today I'm with my precious spiritual daughter, Prophetess Violet Thompson, and we are going to have a fabulous time in the presence of the Lord, as we are going to be sharing on the topic I promised you before, which is spiritual maturity and spiritual growth. And we're going to talk about how the plumb line fits with spiritual maturity and spiritual growth. So, Prophetess Violet Thompson, if you could just greet the people, say hi, and let's get started. Amen. It's such a joy and a privilege to be with you all just one more time. I give the Lord praise so much for this great man of God, my spiritual father, one of my spiritual fathers. And I want to tell you, glory be to God. I praise the Lord so much for him because I know, like I always say, after today, you would never, ever be the same again. God bless you as you sit back and listen in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Okay, I want us to turn our Bibles to Amos chapter 7, verse 7. Amos chapter 7, verse 7. Let's go there. Okay, so this is the book of Amos. Okay, chapter 7, verse 7. Okay, and let's read it. It says, Behold, I am setting a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not pass by them anymore. The high places of Isaac shall be desolate and the sanctuaries of Israel shall be laid waste. I would, raise, I would rise with the sword against the house of Gilbert. So the Lord is saying here, he says, I am standing with a plumb line. And then that dimension, now God has different uh, dimensions and different aspects of himself. It's like, my name is Andre Thomas, but there are different aspects of me. There's Andre Thomas, the coach. There's Andre Thomas, the apostolic coach. And today I'm going to coach you. 
There's Andre Thomas, the prophet. There's Andre Thomas, the deliverance minister. Trust me, all three are different. <laughs> Woo! Amen. And then there is Andre Thomas, the husband. Then there's Andre Thomas, the father. Then you have Andre Thomas, the brother. Then you have Andre Thomas, the friend. It's all Andre Thomas, but each aspect is a different dimension of Andre Thomas. To say that you know everything about Andre Thomas means you got to know me in all my dimensions. Can okay, you see that? He's going to know me in all my dimensions. So God is the same way. You are made in the image and likeness of God. And because God has different dimensions, he is Elohim. That's the first dimension that he introduced himself to us is Elohim, which because God is not his name. God is not the name of God. No. Okay. His name, so his names reveal his dimensions. Amen. Now, I, I, when I teach this, it's really interesting because my wife, she knows how to function with me in the different dimensions because my wife, I am her husband, mm -hmm. I am her spiritual father, and then I am her boss at work. <laughs> so she, <laughs> so she, has, she, has, she has to relate with me in all three. And then, and she knows, so I know when she says bishop. When she says bishop, she can't say, okay, bishop, could you get the dustbin, please, and take it outside? She doesn't say bishop. <laughs> she will use that word bishop. Glory. <laughs> that, because that is not the dimension she wants. Amen. Okay. Okay. But there's a dimension in which she can say it. She can call the name. And when she calls it, she can say, get the dustbin, get in the car, go to the petrol station, get this for me, and come back. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so that is a different dimension. Wow. So I've noticed she's very brilliant. She knows what dimension to call for <laughs> based on what is required at the time. <laughs> okay, so that's my wife. Now, within the same way, we have to understand that God has different dimensions. So, okay, one of his names is Elohim. Elohim means the one who created all things out of nothing. Yeah. And all his creative things can serve his agenda at any time, in any moment, in any place. Amen. And he is the one who is so creative that he can take your mistake and make your, create, and make your mistake serve him. That is then you have another name which is Jehovah. Now, mm -hmm. Jehovah or Yahweh more mm -hmm. deals with human need. Mm -hmm. Elohim does not deal with human need, it deals with the creativity of God. Mm -hmm. Jehovah deals with I am that I am. Hallelujah. Okay, that is whatever you need me to be. I am. So if you need me to be Jehovah Mortgage Payments, I will be Jehovah Mortgage Payments. Amen. Amen. If you need me to be Jehovah, I need a husband. <laughs> you could call him Jehovah, I need a husband. So yeah. he says, Whatever you want me to be, I will be. What I am that I am, I, I can meet any need. So that name deals with the needs of man and so you have jehovah rohi jehovah sikinu all the different names that signify is our righteousness is our peace is our healing is our is our sanctification mm -hmm. then you then have another dimension of him which is jehovah sabbath which deals with the Lord of hosts. Okay, 
which deals with the Lord of hosts, which is the Lord of spiritual armies. Yes. When he uses that name, that's a warfare name. Yes. I mean, I mean, you don't want the Lord to come to you oh. and say, because when the Lord um, sent his angels in that name, and now um, Joshua met the angel of the Lord. And when Joshua met the angel of the Lord, he, he said, who are you? Are you with us? And he said, neither, but I'm captain of the Lord's host. That yeah. means I come from battle. So when yeah. you deal with the battle dimension of God, that is a different dimension. Hallelujah. Then you have another dimension which Jesus revealed to us. He said, our father, which are in heaven. So he's a what? He's a father. Yes. Then you have another dimension, which is judge. Now, when you are presenting cases in the court of heaven, you don't go as father. You go as judge. Because Hallelujah. you're presenting your case and you're asking for judgment on your behalf. Woo! So these are all different dimensions of God. Now, in terms of spiritual growth, it's based on two things. It's based on your knowledge of God, your yes. intimacy with God in his different dimensions, yes. and your understanding, your understanding the ways of God. Of this, that's number one. So it's about knowing God in his different dimensions. So there's somebody could know Jesus as healer, but you don't know the, the name El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the name that will make you rich. Yes. Because El Shaddai means more than enough. Hallelujah. What? Whilst there's a lady who could have lost her, she could have lost a child. And she got to know Jehovah Shalom, the Lord my peace. Lord, my peace. But she doesn't know El Shaddai, she doesn't know him in that dimension. In that dimension. Because there are people who know me in one dimension, but don't know me in another dimension. Hallelujah. So, the more dimensions you know him, the more, the more you the more you experience of him. The more your intimacy grows, the more you, 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 you know, and then you understand his ways. So that's number Ooh. one. The second aspect of spiritual growth is where the Lord applies the plumb line. Because there is a dimension of God that's called judge. And then there's a dimension of God that, that is called rewarder. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. But Amen. then there's another dimension of God with Jesus revealed in John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, he says, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Amen. My father is the gardener. He says, every branch in me that bears fruit, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he cuts it away. And Amen. every branch that bears fruits, he does what? He prunes it mm. that it will bear more fruit. So there is a dimension of God called fruit inspector. Amen. Amen. So the people say, oh, I know my father loves me. My, that is him as father. It's like my children, they know me as father. But they know me as one that can apply the board of education to the seat of learning. Ooh, glory. I can apply that cane very quickly. I with me. So I, so I tell them, I said, which side do you want? Hallelujah. <laughs> you can have the fun side or you can have the other side. Ooh. Your actions decide what side you get. Hallelujah. But those two sides exist. Okay. Now, the Heavenly Father, all his sides exist. But there's a side of him that many in the church 
don't understand because if you don't understand this side of him, you would never be able to grow spiritually the way you should because there's a side of him which, and that's the side that holds the plumb line. That's yeah, the glory. Side, that's the side that measures your foot. This is the side that measures your foot. So this is the side that says, it says, Violet, I have put this anointing in you. I've given you these relationships. Hallelujah. I have given you time. I've given you health. Now let me inspect what you have produced. Food inspector. That's the that's the food inspector. Now so that side is when God sees you have born fruit, he says, Wow, she's born fruit. That's really good. Let us clip these things and let's so she can bear what? More fruit on the next level. So when you're dealing with God as a fruit inspector. Anytime he moves you to the next level, he has to clip some things from you first. So yes. Fruit inspector. So for you to move from one dimension of fruit to a greater dimension of fruit, he applies the plumb line on your life. Mm. And he says, okay, this doesn't measure up. This doesn't measure up. For the next level of your life, these things don't measure up for your next level. And he clips it. Tup, 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 tup. And then you bear the next foot on the next dimension. But then there's some people, when he brings the plumb line, he sees no fruit. And when he sees no fruit, what does the Bible say? He cuts the branch. That's, that's your cut, cut. That's to tell you that there is a side of God that you need to have a reverence for. Amen. Because Jesus, that, Jesus said it in the New Testament. He said, my father is the husbandman. That means he inspects the fruit. Now, think about it. We see within the book of Revelation, Jesus is walking in the midst of the seven lampstands, which are the seven churches. And what is Jesus doing? Inspecting the fruit of the churches. Hallelujah. So, Pastors, congregation members, leaders, there's a dimension of God that does fruit inspection. Now, one thing you've got to understand about when the Lord comes with a plumb line, the Lord doesn't come with a plumb line every day. Because Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven, he says, the government of heaven operates like this. The king of the government comes and gives his servants what to do. Amen. Then he goes on a long journey and leads them. Hallelujah. Then one day after a very long time, he says, I'm going to come and inspect what they have been doing. Hallelujah. Then he says, when he comes to inspect, he finds some servants beating the other servants. He says, what? And the Bible says, he cuts them up asunder. Hallelujah. And a portion with the unbelievers. Then he comes and he sees some other servants who do not know his will or pursue his plan. And the Bible says, he beats them with some stripes. Then he sees some who know his will but did not do his will. And the Bible says he beats them with many stripes. Then obviously he sees some that have produced everything that he wanted them to produce. And he rewards them and says, well done, they're good and faithful servant. Enter into the joy of thy master. This is the dimension of God. Hallelujah. So, so this dimension of him as the husbandman or the gardener who is cultivating his, uh, his garden is the aspect of, of him that commands our growth. Hallelujah. I know that people say, you know, I mean, the Lord knows where I am. The Lord understands. Hmm. Now, he may understand you as a father. 
but he will correct you as the gardener. Jesus. Hallelujah. You see, let me explain. And I'm going to share this and then I turn over to the prophetess. There was a great man of God. And one of his staff violated some very basic protocols. And he loved this member of staff. And what did he do? He said, as the boss, he said, she was my spiritual daughter. And this was a female minister of the gospel. It says, she's, she's my spiritual daughter. She said, I fired her three times hmm. for bad behavior. And I fired her three times and she had to stay outside. He said, I fired her, but guess what? I fired her as boss, but I helped her as spiritual mother after I fired her. Hallelujah. He said, I want you to understand. She said, she said, in the company, in the ministry, the behavior that you're doing right now, I will not tolerate it in any member of staff. Therefore, Hallelujah. you are fired. So she'll be fired. But because they have a very close relationship and God commanded her to nurture her, she would actually give her an allowance, even though she was fired. Hallelujah. Personally but not as a boss. So you Hallelujah. need to understand she was operating like God. Yes. She's operating like God because God, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, he can fire you. Hallelujah. But still love you as his child. Yes. But if you mix both together, you have made a big mistake. Amen. I mean, you have made a big, big mistake because yes. mature leaders, even mature leaders that have their children work in their company, if their child violates one of the company rules, that will cause their pay to be reduced. Mm. The, the father would actually not act like a father. Mm. He will act like a boss. Amen. You cut the pay. Even though after I cut the pay, you're coming to my house and sleeping in my room, yes. I'm still cutting your pay. Yes. I was me. So yes. people need to understand this aspect of God and understand that when you're dealing with God, you are dealing with a being who you are made in the image of. And you are not one dimensional. So somebody cannot say, oh, all there is to Violet obviously, is prophetess. No, you are prophetess. You are mother. You are sister. You, you, you are daughter. You are friend. You are advisor. You are all these people. You're all this dimension. And in each dimension, you act and behave different. Yes. Absolutely. So over to you. <laughs> Bishop. Oh, Bishop. I love this so much today. Glory be to Jesus. You know, like one of my father, like I said, one of his favorite message was from Amos 7 and 7 and 8. He said, the Lord said to Amos, Amos, what is that in your hand? He said, well, it's a plumb line. He said, Amos. Oh, Amos, plumb the line. He said, it's important for you to tell the people. It is important that they plumb the line. Glory be to God. And as, as, as I can hear my father preaching that word, he would say, you know, there is so much of us as servant of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. He said, but yet still we we know the plumb line if one is building a house and, and they all, you got to have that plumb line because that plumb line is so important. Glory be to God, because you have to set up to see if everything measure up right. It, because see, you remember years ago when our parents or great, great grandparents, when they build a structure, they just build it out of mud or whatever, however, and it wasn't too straight. But let me tell you, glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so he began to say, when it comes to God, you got to have everything straight. That plumb line is so important. Your character is on that line. The way you behave is on that line. Your ministry is on that line. Glory be to God, like, like, like Papa said a while ago. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Ministry is on that line. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you might be. I'm a mother. I'm apostle. I'm a prophet. I'm evangelist. I'm a pastor. I'm a teacher. I'm a deliverance minister. I'm a sister. Glory be to God. I'm an auntie. I'm a cousin. Whatever you might call me today, but the Lord is saying to me, hallelujah, are you my daughter? I am a daughter. I'm a child. The most important thing is that I am a child of the king. Glory be to God. And when my daddy speak to me and he said, Violet, plumb the line. It doesn't matter. I'm talking with my spiritual father. I'm talking about my heavenly father. Glory be to God. He's depending on us pastors. He's depending on us evangelists. He's depending on us apostles. It's more than just a title. It's more than just what hat you wear. It is plumbing the line. It's your duty. As the man of God began to talk about the true wine from John, the 15th chapter, he said, listen, I am the true wine. And every branch in me, if you don't bear for fruit, if you don't bear, he would cut you down. Glory be to God. He would even every now and again, he have to purge you. But I like when he said, hallelujah, glory be to God. If we abide in him, according to um, St. John, the 15th chapter in the seven words. In fact, before then, glory be to God. He let us know that I want to give you your heart's desire. I want to do things for you that only me can do. Matthew 7 and 7 say, you must ask. Hallelujah. And if you ask, he said, you must seek. And if you seek, you would find. Ask, seek, and you would find. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. As a child of God, if you don't ask for nothing, then you get nothing. But then he said, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone that seek, they found. Hallelujah. Everyone that knocked, they got the answer. But he said, this was not for everyone. This was only for those, according to John 15 and verse 7, who abide in the vine who abide mm -hmm. in me and my word mm -hmm. abide in them. Now that one can ask whatever he will. Glory be to God. And we would see results. I want to say to you, the Lord is calling for us to plumb the line. He's calling for us to move in another dimension. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Another dimension. And as the man of God began to say, sometimes you wonder why whenever I'm, I get this thing right and when I'm through with that, then something else you're going through. And one might judge you, Bishop. Glory be to God. And they might say, well, how come this thing has not happened in your life? And another thing, I find out that all of these different hats that we wear, someone said to me on a couple of days ago, they said, I watch your Facebook and, and I see how God bless you when you go on mission. I see how the people are saying these stuff and they're saying how they were blind 60 years, they were blind 90 years, they, they was deaf, they was dumb. And, 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 and God give them their sight, they hear, they walk, they see demons are cast out. Even 15 people was dead and they, I mean, living and, 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 and people giving their testimony how they was dead and they came back to life. And they said, how come these things don't happen right here in Turks and Caicos Island or in the Bahamas? You said, how come it don't happen in the Bahamas? Well, there were three persons, hallelujah, died in the Bahamas. But when God delivered them, they kept the story. Um, I must say, one of them tell the story, but the others kept it to themselves until it was revealed. Then they said, yes, my child was there. She prayed and God delivered. And I want to tell you, I'm saying this to tell you, but yet still we go through so much. And people say, why you go through so much? It's good for you because God is pruning me. Hallelujah. He's clipping some stuff off my life to go to another, hallelujah, to get to another dimension, another level with him. He got to let you go to some stuff so you can know Violet. You have not made it yet, Violet. There's so much of things I want to do in your life. And so, Bishop, go ahead. I, I just love this today. Mm -hmm. I, I want mm -hmm. you to go ahead. Teach me, Bishop. Teach okay. me. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read something for you here mm. now. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, the door to your next level is the door of pruning. Many do. of you think the door to your next level is impartation. Impartation is required for your next level. The door to your next level is mentorship. Yes, 
the door, all of those things are included. All of those things are the steps. But you can climb all the steps to go to your next level. Hallelujah. After the next level, there's a door. Yes. And the door to that level is always pruning. Because here is the thing. Let me show you why. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, let me show you why. Ephesians chapter 4. If you're going to get major revelation today, then understand the dealings of God in your lives. Hallelujah. Okay. It says from verse 11, Ephesians 4, verse 11. It says, and I'm reading, I'm reading from the Amplified. And his gifts to the church were varied. And he himself appointed some as apostles, special messengers and representatives, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers. He did this to fully equip and perfect the saints for works of service to build up the body of Christ until, so these are until we reach oneness in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God to become a mature believer reaching to the measure of the fullness of Christ. To, to the measure of the fullness of Christ so that we be no longer children <clears throat> tossed to and fro by every wing of doctrine and the cunning craftiness of men. Now, it says that we should reach the measure of the fullness of Christ, which means every, so there's a measure where the fullness of who Jesus was on the earth in his character, in his wisdom, in his power, and in his holiness can be manifested in your life. Amen in his purpose, in his holiness, and his wisdom. But that happens in dimensions. So in each dimension you have, there is the image of Christ for that dimension. So example, there is, when you get born again, there is a level of the image of Christ that must be in you. But then there's a level higher. And when you go higher, the image of Christ in you must what? Increase. Amen. So at every level, the image Hallelujah. of Christ in you gets clearer and stronger. That is why every that is why pruning is always the door to the next level. Amen. Because your next level, Jesus has to prune from you what is not like Christ. Amen. Now, now, but let me explain what Jesus does, what the Holy Ghost does. The Holy Ghost knows that he cannot take you and prune you to all the levels you will be in your lifetime. Otherwise, he will not be able to work with you. You will just be under the correction of God for all your life. So we find that, that when Jesus recruited the actual disciples. What did he do? He used them and grew them. He used them and matured them. So the plan of God is to use you and develop you. Amen. To use you and align you. The Lord does not say, stay and let me clean up everything about you before I use you. He'll have to wait for too many years. Hallelujah. So what he does, he uses you at a particular level. And then for you to go to the next level, he cleans you up for that next level. Hallelujah. Then he uses you at that level. Then as you're ready for the next level, he cleans you for that next level. So for every level, he cleans you progressively. Hallelujah. Now, let me give you the testimony of a great man of God. He was one of the leading teachers of the word 
in America, great expositor of the work. And uh, he had, his ministry was expanding, his books were bestsellers, and the Lord had called him to be an apostle to the Soviet Union. And he was listening to one of his friends and brothers in the ministry teach. And he heard his friend say that the Lord told him that there were four things in his life that the Lord had to prune out of his life for his next level. So when he heard it, he said, oh, if this friend only has four things, I must only have one. <laughs> so he said he was going to go to the Lord and ask the Lord how many things were necessary to be pruned out of his life actually for the next level. And yes. because he acted, he asked in pride, the Lord gave him 72 things. Wow. He said he was so disgusted with himself that Ooh. he went to the bathroom and threw up. When wow. the Lord showed him all the stuff in his life. Wow. And he said, Lord, but I'm a minister. You're using me. I'm a lawyer. Yet I still have 71 things in my life to correct. And the Lord said, the reason why I gave you all the trends, 71, is because you are too arrogant. And you thought that you are so good. This is what I do. I correct you progressively. I yeah. correct you for your next level. Hallelujah. <laughs> he said, so next time, don't you ever think you're better than somebody else? He says, mm -hmm. I correct you for your next level. He said, so, he said, he said, you always need correction because the image of Christ is not fully formed in you. Hallelujah. Now, let me take you to one more scripture and then we're going to turn over. Hallelujah. So Ephesians chapter three, it's a major scripture here that's going to help so many people. Jesus. Ephesians chapter three. My Lord. It says, it says, okay, reading from verse 14, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14. It says, oh, it says, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with his spirit, with might in your inner man, that Christ may be formed in you. That Christ may be formed in you by faith. So that means Christ is being formed in everyone. So this is the process. So one year ago, the level of Christ that was formed in me Hallelujah. and the level of Christ that is formed in me now is greater. So as long as the level of Christ the image of Christ that is formed in you is increasing, you are growing. <laughs> and for that to increase, whenever Christ is forming in you, it means your flesh is dying. Wow. You see, your flesh, as Christ is forming in you, the flesh in you is dying. Hallelujah. Your flesh is dying. It's been crucified. So, as he is formed in you, it's like John said. He said, I must increase. He says, he must increase and I must decrease. Increase, amen. So as, as Christ increases in you, Hallelujah. your flesh decreases. Oh, glory. I was mean. So that is what happens in growth. So growth has these two dimensions. It has you knowing God, knowing God in his different dimensions and understanding his ways. And number two, Christ being formed in you progressively from phase to phase. Now, what happens to some people is that they are the same way they've been for the last two years. Hallelujah. Christ has not been formed in them in a greater way. Jesus. The same image of Christ they had two years ago Ooh. is what they have now. They are not growing. There are ministers who are not growing. There are congregation members who are not growing. There are deacons who are not growing. He is not increasing 
and their flesh is not decreasing. Ooh, I tell my staff, this is what I tell my staff. I tell all the church leaders, I say, the worst version of Andre Thomas you will see is the version you see this month. Because next month, I've gone to the next level. Hallelujah. Because I'm growing. The fruit of the Spirit in me is growing. The gifts of the Spirit in me is growing. The anointing of the Spirit of God in me is growing. Ooh. And my flesh is dying. 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 <sighs> In the month of June, more flesh will die than in the month of May. Yes. Because yes. I am going up. That's what spiritual growth is. So a lot of people, they want the things God wants for them. Now, let me explain this. Oh, my God. Now, you need to understand this about God. God is not only dimensional in the different roles he plays in our lives is also dimensional in the things he's planned for us. So example, let's take prophet as Violet, for instance. Say God, is what the Bible talks about from glory to glory. Say God has ordained in her life that at dimension number 25, that she, she has a particular blessing and a particular breakthrough. And at dimension number 35, she gets another breakthrough and another mighty miracle in her life. Now, here's what God is going to do. When Prophetess Violet is at dimension two, he will show her what can happen at dimension 35. Yes, yes. And then he will show her what can happen at dimension 25? But this is what happens to people. God shows you what can happen at dimension 25 of your growth. At dimension number 10 of your growth. Then what happens? You know what happens? Instead of growing, they pray for God to do it at dimension 2. Woo. Hallelujah. Wow. Hey! Oh my God. So, so this day, what God showed them can only happen at dimension 25. But they are in dimension two because God shows you the end from the beginning. God said, Joseph, I am going to make you a ruler. But the anointing to be a ruler cannot come on you at the dimension you are in your father's house. You have no wisdom. You have no wisdom. Because at that dimension, he did not have any wisdom. He, 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 he could not see that his brothers would throw him in the pit. Amen. How can I make you a political leader <laughs> when you cannot lead people that will do you harm? Hallelujah. Then he was so naive that when Potiphar's wife called him, to do extra cleaning in the bathroom, he went. <laughs> <laughs> because the young man did not have no understanding because he was not at the dimension to be prime minister. Because to be prime minister, you have to read a lot of stuff. You got to read the intentions of people. You have to read, you have to have understanding of all of these things. So. God had him to be prime minister at this dimension. But for him to get there, he had to do what? Grow. So yeah. you have people who don't want to grow, wow. don't want the Lord to prune them, don't want the image of Christ to be formed in them, and they stay at dimension two, fasting and praying for what can only be released when they get to dimension 25. Then they wow. go to different conferences and they say, man of God, lay hands on me. So lay hands on me. No hands can be laid on you. For what is for your dimension 25 to come on you in dimension two? Ooh, wow. You have to grow. You have to grow. So that's why God can show you, you're going to have a very powerful ministry. 
But this powerful ministry is for you in dimension 27. Right now, you're still on dimension 11. Hallelujah. <laughs> preach, Bishop, preach. Woo! <laughs> Glory! Woo! I like this teaching, Bishop. Mm. Yes, don't give me glory. Now, the great Apostle Paul, the Bible says in Acts chapter 13, okay, the Bible says, let's go to Acts chapter 13. So, Acts chapter 13. Today we're teaching, today I'm coaching you. <laughs> Acts chapter 13. Wow. Ah, yeah, yeah. My God. Acts chapter 13. It's why so many people get frustrated, but they're wow. frustrated because they don't know how the system works. Yeah. If you, when you reach that level, take example, listen. I was at a particular level of, of ministry in which, okay, I mean, there's a level I was that there are times I would go and preach. And after I preach, I mean, somebody would come and put something in their hand and give me a Pentecostal handshake. Okay, that was my offering at that time. Right now, at the level that I am, that is an impossibility. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are you with me? It's an impossibility. Because, because of the level I am, the level I command, the authority I have, that level in which they give you uh, a Pentecostal handshake after you've heard what we could say, <laughs> that those days are past. You know why? Because I have done what? Grown. You see that? Now, do I, you see, so the people, what you are experiencing, you're experiencing because that is what happens at that level. Oh my God, there's so much I want to put in you. Woo! At that level. Now, let me explain this. Let me give you a personal story so you can cast it better. Big Bishop. I actually, um, there's, there was a particular country in which I built a Bible school. And the Bible school did very well, trained hundreds and hundreds of students. And then there were some uh, anointing imitators who did not, or grace imitators, because people can imitate grace. Yeah. They can imitate anointing and not really have it. Yeah. And they do not have an anointing to train people, but too many people people were coming to my Bible college. And so they decided, they had a meeting and decided that each one of them should have their own Bible college so as to stop that many people coming to Andrea Thomas's Bible college because his Bible college is too popular. And when they had the meeting, so many people met me on the road and said, I heard there was a meeting to stop your Bible college. I heard there was a meeting. I'm so many people. So I was so upset. Mm. I was so hurt. And it was Boxing Day many years ago. And I was at the beach with the church. And I was upset. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, the beach had two sections. One section was very shallow. And in the shallow section, the water comes up to your waist. And the other section was the deep section, which it, it was the big blue sea. Okay. The other section that was very shallow had, it was kind of enclosed with rocks. So it was very safe and you had hardly any waves. <laughs> okay. Now the Lord spoke to me. He said, Andre, look at the section of the beach that is shallow. How many people are there? Remember, it was Boxing Day. And I said, Lord, about 300, between 200 and 300 people. And he said, yes. And he said, have you noticed? There's hardly any room to move. I said, yes. He says, now look to the deep end. He says, how many people are there? I counted six people in the entire deep end, which was the big blue sea. 
And the Lord said, on the shallow ends of your destiny, you always have imitation, imitation artists. Wow. He says, but at the deep end of your destiny, if somebody follows you and copies you, they will die in the water. Hey, Rory. Woo. He hey. said, if you look at the shallow end, he says, all those 300 people are imitation swimmers. Wow. He said, so if you stay in the shallow dimension of what I called you, you always have to deal with people who are imitating you, copying you, talking about you, ah, because, because you're in the shallow end. At the shallow end, you can be imitated. Yes, yes. He said, but if you go to the deep end, he said, the people who operate in the deep end are the people who have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because it takes skill to swim in the deep end. Yes. It takes skill. And in the deep end, there is never a traffic jam in the deep wow. end. There is never. Have you ever seen in the deep end it be full of people? No. Because he said the deep end of any calling is where you can go as far as you want. You cannot be copied. People cannot stop you. People cannot. He said to go to the deep end. That's I that changed my life. But what he was telling me, he was telling me the dimension of your calling that you are in, you are too low. That's why people can stop you. Yes, but yes. If you go high enough, if they try to stop you, the water will drown them. <laughs> wow. Woo! He said, because you're too deep. He said, yes. you're too deep. He said, you have to go where your foot cannot touch. Please, yeah, yeah, yeah. My God, my and then God. To operate there. You have to be an expert swimmer. He said, he said, go to the dimension that only experts go. Wow, hallelujah. Woo. He said, swim in the dimension that only experts go. He said, at that level, you cannot be copied. At that level, you cannot be imitated. So I was upset but god told me the reason why this has happened to you is because you're too low wow. that is the day that i decided i'm gonna go wow i'm gonna go and i'm gonna i mean i'm gonna go to a level <laughs> and i smiled to myself i said if you follow me They'll bury you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Because I'm operating in some dimensions. You can only operate that if you are an expert, if the Holy Ghost has trained you. I was me. So yes. that is the, so for people who who are who are on who are facing so much opposition. My encouragement to you is go deeper. Jesus. <clears throat> Prophet, it's over to you. <laughs> oh, Bishop, Bishop, listen. You heard me say when this program first began, I said, after today, you would never, ever be the same again. I want to <laughs> say, after today, I, Violet Thompson, would never, ever be the same again. Because you know why, Bishop? I'm going deeper. Yes. I'm going deeper. Hallelujah. That's it. That's it. I realized today that I am in shallow ground. I realized today that what I'm going through, God is saying, move Violet in the deep. And so I want to just say to you, Bishop, my spiritual father, I want you to know that if you can do it, I can do it. Amen. Because what I'm seeing in you, I want to go after what I see in you. I want to go after, I want to go after the things of God. I want to come out of this shallow because this shallow is killing me. 
there's too many people in the shadow with me. And today I'm gonna go deeper. Go ahead, Bishop. You see, let me explain. When you're in the shallow end, fleshy people can stop you. Because if you're in the shallow end, five people can gather together. Because when you're in the shallow end, the shallow end means your feet can touch the ground, which means your flesh is functioning. When you're in the deep end, you better be a swimmer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because, because your, your feet cannot touch. If your feet touch the ground and stay there long enough, you're going to drown. So, yeah. so, so, so here's the thing. So swimming represents flowing in a deeper dimension of the spirit. Now, it is way difficult for somebody to block you when you are swimming in the deep sea. How? But if you are on, if you are in shallow end. Hallelujah. Ten people can just put a circle around you. They're all standing and you're in the middle. You're, you're in the anointing, but the anointing is not deep enough. Yes, yes. Woo! So all kinds of fleshy people can block you. Yes. Not, not if you're now in the deep end. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory. You're flowing in some realms. You're flowing in some realms of influence, realms of impact, realms not in their in their imitation swimmer realm. Because in that realm, people imitate the backstroke, but they're going nowhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. The front but they're going nowhere. They imitate the breaststroke, they're going nowhere. They imitate David, all they do is make a splash. They're going nowhere. <laughs> all they do is just jump up and down. They, they, they act like they're swimming, but they're really going not, they don't really going anywhere. Hallelujah. But in the deep end, you can swim from one place to another. Jesus. In the deep end, you can swim from one country to another. In the Hallelujah. deep end, ships. Ships do not, ships do not move in the shallow end. Hallelujah. Because the shallow end cannot carry the weight of the ship. Hallelujah. The ship can only move when there's high tide. Wow. The water has to be deep. Hey, glory. See, the water has to be deep. And when the water is deep, a ship can go from Turks and Caicos Islands to China. Amen. It can be carried because of the depth. The depth. The depth. The depth. It can carry all. It can. In fact, there are there are aircraft carriers who are like airfields, airfields on ships, and these airfields carry multiple planes. And in the deep, in the deep, they can float. Wow. So the, so the heavier you are, the more heavy what you become, the deeper you have to go. Yes, yes. Woo, glory. So the hey. deeper you go, the more your capacity expands. Yes. Now, can you imagine Somebody trying to block an aircraft carrier? They can get killed. In the water? Absolutely. You cannot. Because it's, 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 it's functioning on the high seas. Hallelujah. So, so the Lord told me, he said, you are functioning in the shallow end. It's why you're having problems. Go to the high seas. Somebody needs to hear that word. Yes. Somebody needs to hear Ooh. it. And this is not just about ministry. This is about any area of life. You can function and become such an expert in what you're doing that you become, you see, the, let me now take it to the natural realm. A study was done 
on what attribute in the natural realm causes people to magnetize millions of dollars to them. And when they did a study, they found out that the highest, some people got their wealth by inheritance. And that was under 1%. Wow. Some people got their money through marriage. That was under 1%. But most of the people that got their money was by being an expert. Wow. Uh, wow, what a difference. That is mastery. That is your expert. So it's the same way the expert, if now there are people who pray for the sick, but they're not experts. Mm -hmm. There are people who do deliverance, they're not experts. There are people mm -hmm. who teach, they're not experts. Mm -hmm. There are people who pastor, they're not experts. Mm -hmm. they're, 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 the people who administrate, they're not experts. But mm -hmm. when you get to the level where Paul said mastery, so let me show you this from the word, because, because there's somebody saying, well, I hear you, Bishop, but isn't that natural wisdom? No, it's not natural wisdom. It's the wisdom of God, and I'm going to show you in the word. Hallelujah. I can, I can hear your thoughts. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let me show you in the word so that you get this. Oh, glory be to God. Thank God, my God. Show you in the word. This is good. Mm. This is good food, Bishop. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. Feed me, feed me. Hallelujah. Oof. So we're going to go to Corinthians. Okay. Okay. First Corinthians chapter nine. Okay. Okay. And reading from verse twenty-four. Okay. <clears throat> so let's read from wow the lord's going to drop something here today i sense it first corinthians chapter 9 verse 18 it says know ye that they which run in a race run all but one receiveth the price, so run that you may obtain. Everyone that striveth for mastery. Mm -hmm. What is another word for mastery? Expert. Amen. What's the word for mastery? The best. What's the word for mastery? Gold medal standard. Now let me give you the, the Greek word for it. Wow. It says, everyone who striveth for mastery. Mastery means that you are a master in the subject. You are an expert in the subject. You're not in the shallow end of the subject. You are in the deep end of the subject. You are a professor in the subject. Amen. Woo! Amen. Hallelujah. Okay? Hallelujah. Now... Okay, so let me give you it in the Greek. The word striveth for mastery is the word agonizumi. 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 And it means to enter a contest, to contend in, a, in gymnastic games. It means to master your skill. It means to be a master gymnast. It means to practice until you can do it with your eyes closed. Wow. It means you're a master. So what happens with people 
God was telling me, he says, my son, yes, you're doing what I called you to do, but you're not a master yet. Hallelujah. So he said, you need, to, you need to get into mastery. Yes, yes. You need to learn the A to Z of this. Now, you can be somebody who is a cook or a chef. Like, I remember, there's one of my spiritual daughters. She is an amazing chef. And she strove for mastery. And because she strove for mastery, she won chef of the year. And she can make some meals that only, and she gets the meals in a dream. God will give her a dream of how to make a new dish. Wow. I'm telling you, she was getting supernatural information on how to make food. Wow. How to make the most amazing, exotic now, dishes. Now, so this lady, when it came to cooking, she was in another class. Yes. She was in another class. Because in that class, she had mastery. Now, you cannot expect that a woman of that class in mastery is going to have the same uh, issues as a person who is called, she is the school cook, the canteen cook. The, the canteen cook does cooking, but there's a reason why she's not called the canteen chef. <laughs> she's called uh -huh. the canteen cook. Wow. The chef still does cooking, but it's done at a what? Higher what? Level. It's why there's a level of chef called executive chef. So, uh -huh. a, so the executive chef cooks and the canteen cook cooks. Uh -huh. They're both cooks. One, one can earn half a million dollars a year. Wow. As an executive chef. Whilst the canteen cook, oh, oh yeah, would earn 50 bucks a day. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you see that? But they're all cooking. One just does it on the shallow end. The wow. other does it on the deep end. Yeah. Ooh, so, glory. I'm charging you today. I got a word that do not do Christianity on the shallow end. Do not do Christianity on the shallow end. It's time for you to go into what? The deep end. Don't do your calling on the shallow end. Do it on the deep end. Like I have no fear about my ministry, no fear about my calling, no fear. Because I'm in a realm where I am unstoppable. Hallelujah. Glory. The only person that can stop me is me. It's you. Or God. Nothing Hallelujah. can stop me. Only God can stop me or me can stop me. Because I'm in a realm now where I'm in the high seas. Hallelujah. So, woo. But it takes work to get there. And by the way, I am going even deeper because even in the high seas, there are higher depths, higher depths. Now they tell us that in the high seas, particularly in the Pacific Ocean, there are places that are so deep that they are deeper than the height of Mount Everest. Wow. That's how deep they are. There are, there are depths that mankind has never gone down to in the Pacific Ocean. That's how deep it is. So there are depths. And until I leave this earth, I'm going to be going from depth to depth. Now, I want to impart that into somebody. Hallelujah. I want to impart that passion into somebody. Hey, glory. I want to impart that desire into somebody. I want to impart that grace to somebody where you can go and say, husband, I just want to tell you, the lowest level of wife and woman 
that you ever see is the one you see in the month of June. Because by July, I've changed levels. Hallelujah. You can tell your friends. I just want to tell you, friends, that I'm not staying the same. This month. I'm just telling you, friends, that I'm changing level. And how do you do that? You need to, like, I have a program. Growth in the spirit realm is not accidental. Growth in spirit realm is not by time. You have to intentionally feed yourself, feed your gift, feed your leadership, grow your character. You need to intentionally do this. Amen. Wow. Um, over to you. <laughs> Bishop, I'm enjoying this so much. I can just eat, eat, eat all day. Bishop, yeah. believe you me, today is the first day of June, 2020. Yes. I want to say this from today, this day, where I was last month in May, I promise you for what I'm feeling today, this, the programs was good. Everything was good, whatever time. But today I want to say to everyone that are listening, after listening to this program, I want you to please share this program. Share this with your friends, friends, friends. Let them share this. Let them share this all over the world. Glory be to God. I guarantee you, if you take instruction today, we would never, ever be the same. From today, Bishop, I want to say this month, I, Violet Thompson, would never, ever be the same again because I'm going to follow instruction because I want to grow to greatness, knowing that what the Lord have for me, hallelujah, glory be to God, is not measured by what he done in the past. That was the past. But today, from this day, I'm going to be a brand new person. Go ahead, Bishop. Amen, amen, amen. Now, let me give you one example and then we'll close. Wow. The Apostle Paul, God, Jesus appeared to him in a dramatic vision and told him and showed him his purpose, that he was a chosen vessel. In Acts chapter 13, we see the Bible says that at the church in Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Manin, Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, and Saul, and Barnabas. And the Bible said that they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And the Spirit of God said, separate Paul and Barnabas to the work where to have called them. Now, they had been in the ministry for 13 years. So it took 13 years for Paul to get to the dimension where the apostolic anointing could come, up, could come upon him. Yes, yes. Now, so it took 13 years for him to climb up the dimension. One of the problems that we've seen in the body of Christ, which I want to deal with as an elder in the body of Christ, is that it took 13 years for Paul to get there. Now, the day Jesus appeared to him, he was called to be an apostle. But after 13 years, he was put in the office of the apostle. Amen. Amen. It's what the Bible says many are called, but few are what? Chosen. Sure. So when God calls you, the word call means there's a pool in your spirit, there's a tug in your spirit. So God is calling you, He reveals what he's calling you to. And he leaves a tug and a pull in the spirit. Now, a lot of people, they actually enter the ministry on the call. Amen. But you don't name yourself after the call. You only name yourself after you've been chosen. Hallelujah. Because the apostle Paul was called when Jesus appeared to him 13 years before. Amen. But he never called himself apostle. Hallelujah. He only called himself apostle. At that time, it says there were in the church certain prophets and teachers. So he was either a teacher or a prophet. Yes. And most Bible scholars believe he was a teacher. 
and that's what he did. But it was not until in Antioch, when he entered that dimension, after teaching in the church in Antioch for about two years, that he entered the dimension where God said, I'm now going to put you in the apostolic office. So what we have, we have people who, when God calls them, they print a business card and announce it. Hmm. But when God calls you, the anointing of the call, wow, is different than the anointing of the choosing. Hallelujah. Now, Say it again, God, Bishop. The anointing of the call is different from the anointing of the choosing. God, when God anointed Elisha the first time, the Bible says that the prophet Elijah came and threw his mantle on him. Mm -hmm. That was the call. Okay. The next time he had the mantle, the Bible says the spirit and the power of Elijah came upon him. That was the choosing. Hallelujah. Hey, glory. But between the call and the choosing, there is growth. You need to climb up dimensions. Yes. Let me give you in another way. David was called to be a king when the prophet Samuel anointed him. Yes. But he didn't call himself king because that was the anointing of the call, which was the preparation. Yes. Then when David became after Ziglag and Saul died, the men got together and they did what? They anointed him to yes. be king over Judah. That's when he was chosen to be king over Judah. But he still was not king over Israel because destiny is progression. It is progressive. Amen. Into it by dimensions. Then after the house of Saul lost, what happened is the, the Bible says the elders of Israel came together and they anointed him to be king over Israel. Israel. So you see, he went from being chosen, then to be called, to, for, 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 for being called when the prophet Samuel anointed him, then yes. to be chosen as king. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens to people. A lot of people, that is why there's so much mistakes in the body of Christ. They actually announce themselves too quickly. Yes, so yes, they yes. Just wait until God chooses them. Amen. So they could have a prophetic call, but they have not gone through the prophetic process. I know you're they right. They have not climbed up the prophetic dimensions. They haven't gained mastery. So as soon as they get a call, they get, they print a certificate, they print this, someone ordains them and say, we now call you prophetess Elizabeth. We now call you apostle this. But the person is not seasoned. Amen. The, person, the, 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 all they have is the anointing of the call. And the anointing of the call is not enough. Hallelujah. You need the anointing of the choosing. Woo. And many people never make it to the choosing because it's what the Bible says, many are called, but few are chosen. Yes. Because to get to the choosing, you have to go through many dimensions. Yes, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. And with that, I end. <laughs> Over to you, say some words, and then we're going to pray. For God, I'm going to pray for God to really impart into people. Because I sense there are people, there's some of you, listen, if you listen to me, some of you have titles that you just need to leave the title. Yes. Because you have that calling, but you have not gone through the process yet. Wow. The process is not finished. For the spirit and the power of that calling Ooh. to be you. you see, wow. Elisha was called to be a prophet. When the mantle came upon him, he was trained by following Elijah. 
but the spirit and the power of the prophetic was the thing yet. After Elijah left and the mantle came, that's when the spirit and the power came on him. He took the mantle, hit the Jordan, and it split hither and thither. So we have people using a name, but the spirit and the power of the office is not on them. Wow. I'm not saying God didn't call them to it. Yes. But they have not, they and they have not been chosen yet. It's why we have all the mess we have in the body of Christ. Yes. Because people who are operating of the call are not of the choosing. And we have ministers who are not wise enough and they ordain people who are just called who have not been chosen. Wow. You only ordain the chosen, not the called. Wow. Because many are called, but few are chosen. You only ordain them when God, because God said, separate Paul and Barnabas to the work we're on to have called them. So he spoke to the ministers that were there and said, Paul and Barnabas are ready. Wow. He said, they're ready now. They've been wow. preaching for 13 years. They've been ministering for 13 years. They've been growing in different dimensions. Now they're ready. Ooh. Now the spirit and the power of the apostolic is upon them. And so we need this order put in the ministry. Now, but, but we have people who to attract people they just give out certificates uh, like it is, uh, um, it's almost buy a certificate. Yes, yes, they yes. Give out, they give out stuff just like, they, 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 they just give out stuff. They, 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 because yes. that, that, I'm telling you, the plumb line of Jesus, the plumb line of God, that is not the agenda of God. Mm. You are actually helping destroy their lives Mm. You're exposing them to warfare they're not supposed to reach. Mm. Let them season mature until the and the power of the office comes upon them. Then you ordain. Woo. Then you call them that. Wow. Bishop, as you were speaking, I heard the, 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 the Lord said, he said, many will die in this season because they're taking on these, these office. They're taking on these um, apostles and bishops and, 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 and titles. They're taking on these titles and God knows nothing about them. And um, he said in this season, in fact, three nights ago, I had a vision and um, in that vision, I saw where many just died of sudden heart attack. And the Lord told me, he said, Violet, in this season, he said, many of them are not called by my name. Many of them was not chosen by me. And because we sometimes, you want to run ahead, God, and act as though that, hey, look, I can do this because others think I'm ready for it. It's not by might, not by power, but it's by the Spirit, said the Lord. And in this season, glory be to God, the Lord said, I can shake, shake, shake these office. And many, hallelujah, but die in this season. Bishop, listen, I, I, I'm enjoying this teaching so much. I'm going to stop right here and just let you close out. I want to say to all of us who are listening, please take heed to this teaching and know that if you know that in your heart that you are not ready for this position, please, before the Lord allow, before the Lord kill you, take you out before you be destroyed, before you destroy your own self, please get out of the shallow and get into the deep with God. Seek him and fasting and praying because it's going to be a shaking in the church, a shaking, glory be to God. And I want to say today, I know that I would never, ever be the same again, Bishop, because what you're saying today and how the Lord used you today, I'm going to go after the deep. I'm going to go after it in mm. Jesus' name. Hey, glory in Jesus' name. You see, let me explain something to you. What happens? What happens is this. When you move ahead of time, I'm going to share it in the life of Jesus. Jesus was called from birth, but he was chosen the day John baptized him. Yes. That's the day he got chosen. Now, something happened when he got chosen. I want you to 
let me explain what happens in the spirit room when they get chosen. You need to grasp this. Because this is why when people are not chosen, you have a lot of casualties. Let me explain why. There's a reason why in the spirit room. The Bible says that when Jesus was, when John baptized him, the spirit of God came upon him like a dove, which means a fresh, a mantle of the office came upon him. Then the second thing happened. The Bible says the heavens opened. The heavens opening means that angelic armies are now backing his ministry. Yes. So there is a portal over your life. And that's why you have power. Yes. What happens is this. If Woo! you get chosen, you can call yourself apostle, but the apostolic portal is not open over you. Amen. Amen. You can call yourself prophet, but a prophetic portal is not open over you. Hallelujah. You can call yourself pastor, a pastoral portal is not open. So a portal needs to be open. The Bible says, and the heavens open. So yes. If the heavens open, that means the heavens were closed before. Yes. So the heavens opened so that what Jesus was carrying would be manifested. And there was angelic traffic to cause the ministry to happen. So what happens is when we're too quick, what happens, we now step into ministry and situations without angelic cover. And because we lack angelic cover, Satan can penetrate. And we engage and we engage satanic warfare that is too much for us and our bodies give up, we die, we have devastation. It's not because God did not call you, but you did not wait until you matured in the call. Yes. He put the anointing on you and opened the heavens above you. You see, a man who the heavens are open over him is different than a man who the heavens are not open over him. Hallelujah. Glory. Woo! Both of them have gifts. The man without the heavens open and the man with the heavens open, they both have a gift. But what happens to one doesn't happen to the other because the one, the heavens are still closed. He's still under the call. He has not graduated to the choosing. Hallelujah. God has not certified him yet. It's why Paul said, study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself certified, accredited by God. The yes. word there is accreditation. So there's the accreditation that comes from heaven. In which heaven says, right now, I accredit Paul and Barnabas. Right now, I credit you for the apostolic office. Release it now. It says, right now, okay, Jesus, I credit Jesus. Is why the voice came and said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. That means I credit him. He's ready. He's Ooh. ready. He's hey! Ready. Now, if Jesus had to get ready, and he's Jesus, why do you think that just because you're called, you can just start? and call yourself the name and operate in the full power of it. My that God. Madness. But it is taught, it is encouraged, and it causes a lot of casualties, a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors, a lot of frustration. But today, I believe God is speaking to the church. This yes. Is for the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, this is wisdom for you to help you and develop you. I do not say you cannot become this in the future, but let God accredit you. Doctors have to be accredited. That's why they call junior doctors. They have not fully matured yet. Yes. Junior doctors, apprentice doctors. So you yes. have to be an apprentice first. But yes. people want to start without being no apprentice. They, just want to go. they got the call today. They bring, bring the business can tomorrow. And they call themselves by it. no apprentice, no apprenticeship, nothing like that, no teaching, no development. But today, 
I believe that God is going to touch someone's life. And as we lift our hands, hands high right now, I'm going to pray for the spirit of God. I'm going to pray for Christ to be formed in you. I'm going to pray for the anointing for spiritual growth. The anointing of true spiritual growth. So the anointing of true spiritual growth. The anointing of true spiritual growth will hit this camp in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice, in the name of Jesus, that the anointing for spiritual growth, the anointing to move from dimension to dimension, yes, Lord. the anointing to show them where they are and what yes. they need to do for the next level, the anointing yes. that will show them what needs to be pruned for the next level, the anointing that will show them the steps for the next level, for the steps of a good man and order of the Lord. I yes. pray that there be a release of that right now in the name of Jesus. For you told me that this month, the month of June is a month of spiritual alignment. And yes. so I decree that there is an alignment that comes in the lives of people. There is an yes. alignment. And Father, those who know that they have been using titles that they have not matured in yet. They've been using big titles like apostle, like bishop, like, uh, huh, oh my God, like prophetess. Prophet. Prophet. And they have not matured because it takes a lot, it takes a while to Woo! train people and yes. develop people in these offices because of yes. the responsibility of it. So, Father, I pray right now in yes. the name of Jesus that grace will come upon them, yes. grace will come upon them, that they will mature to the level where they can become approved by you, accredited yes, by you in the name of Jesus. I give you glory, Father. Yes, Lord. I release grace, oh. grace in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Today is not a day of praying for the sick. Ooh. Today is a day of spiritual growth. Yes, that's Lord. what I sense. Today is a day yes. of, of growing. Yes. Today is a day when the grace to grow is here. Hallelujah. And I want you to purpose in your heart that you are going to live a life that goes from dimension to dimension. You're going to live a life that goes from dimension to dimension. You're going to live a life that goes from glory to glory. You're going to pursue growth and aim for the high seas of your calling in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank, thank you. you. Amen. Uh, Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, it has been wonderful. Wow. You are certainly <laughs> going to come back. <laughs> It's been so great having you. It's been such a joy to have you. Such a joy to have you. Amen. Hallelujah. In a joy. A yes. joy being in your midst, Bishop. Yes. I want yes. to say I grace your presence in Jesus' yes. name. Amen. Amen. Well, Hallelujah. Pledge to everybody. Our greatness shall not be hid. Say, my greatness. My greatness shall not be hid. Not be hid. In the Amen. name of Jesus. In the yeah, name so of join us tomorrow as we continue. I'm going to be having Pastor Bradley Hanfield. We're going to talk Amen. about some alignment issues. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about that. So I'm so glad that you are joining us at School of Greatness. For those of you who have your tithes and offerings to give, you can go to divinevisitation.com. Be blessed. Shalom. We love you. Amen. Bye-bye. Love you, Bishop. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>